Goed. Center, base. Present, arms. Order, arms. Ready, base. Introduce a special guest with us this morning. Uh, Miss Campbell Kennedy. She's in Miss Teen, uh, Massachusetts of America. in uniform, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. Thank you.
Thank you, George. At this time, I would like to lead us in a brief prayer. For our Commander-in-Chief, President Trump, and our political and military leaders, they may tirelessly seek peaceful settlements to international disputes. That the Lord may preserve the members of our Army, Navy, Marines, Coast Guard, and Air Force from all harm. That even in war, we may keep clearly before us the defense of all human rights, especially the right of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That the families, relatives, and friends of our military members may be strengthened in this time of concern and anxiety. That the Lord may help families with men and women in the armed forces to cope with daily challenges in the absence of their loved ones. That our homeland will be preserved from violence and terrorism. That the nations of the world will seek to work together in harmony and peace. That the hearts of all men and women will be moved to pursue true peace and justice. Be grateful for, for and inspired by those veterans who have given their lives for our country. We may bravely face the challenges ahead. We pray to the Lord. Thank you. This year marks the 100th anniversary of the Armistice of the Great War. It was known as such for 20 years following the cessation of hostilities on November 11, 1918. The United States was drawn reluctantly into World War I by the unrestricted sum of it, submarine warfare of Germany resulting in the sinking of the Lusitania. The German invasion of neutral Belgium, the financial support of Britain and France by J.P. Morgan, the resultant addition of 4.4 million fresh American troops to the front lines of the trenches in France proved to be the decisive force in bringing German government to the conclusion they would not win the war. They sued for peace and the armistice which intended to eliminate future wars showed that an unpopular German government with exorbitant war reparations and did little to dissuade Germany that had been treated fairly by the international community. World War II began 20 years later as the German government centering on nationalism spread its aggressive vengeance both east and west. This time I would like to introduce the Honorable Mayor of the City of Brockton, Bill Carpenter. the microphone up. Well, thank you and good morning. Uh, first, on behalf of the city, we thank all veterans here uh, in attendance for their service to our country as a city. We are committed to supporting those who have served and those who are currently serving at anywhere and any place. It is uh, my privilege to present to you a proclamation uh, from Governor Baker. Whereas since the Commonwealth's colonial days, thousands of men and women have served our country in defense of freedom and liberty, and whereas on November 11, 1918, the armistice was signed in the forest of Compiègne by the Allied nations in Germany, ending World War I, the war to end all wars, after four years of conflict. And whereas since that day, every November, people from around the nation have gathered to honor our veterans. And whereas there are approximately 388,000 veterans living in Massachusetts, and whereas today we are reminded of the great sacrifices and contributions our veterans have made to our country, and whereas we honor and salute those who served our country throughout the generations with honor, patriotism, and courage, and whereas it is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens remember the bravery of those who served their country 
so that their dedication and sacrifices serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedom. And whereas in November 2018, the world will commemorate the 100th anniversary of the armistice that ended the fighting in World War I at 11 a.m. November 11th, 1918, the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. Now therefore I, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim November 11th, 2018 to be Veterans Day and urge all the citizens of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in its observance. And so fitting uh, that we uh, honor our veterans here in this building on the 100th anniversary of the armistice in a building that was built for the veterans of World War I. Thank you, Your Honor. Events like this can't be uh, put on, funded, without the support of our elected officials. And I'm very grateful that uh, this community has always been supportive of veterans, uh, veterans here in Brockton and uh, elsewhere in Massachusetts, uh, particularly to my office. I'd like to recognize and uh, Thank city councilors at large, Moses Rodriguez, Jean Bradley Derencourt, Ward 2 City Councilor Tom Monahan, Ward 5 City Councilor Ann Beauregard, Ward 6 City Councilor Jack Lally, Ward 7 City Councilor Shirley Azak. On our school committee, we have Tim Sullivan, and our Ward 2 uh, School Committee person, Lisa Plant, and Southeastern Regional School Committee member, Mark Lindy. Our county is represented today by Register of Deeds John Buckley. Several councilors weren't able to join us this morning due to previous commitments or physical ailments. Uh, I wanted to thank all of uh, our political supporters. At this time, I'd like to introduce a special guest for our uh, ceremony today. His name is uh, Michael Dash. He's a retired first sergeant of the United States Marine Corps. He's also assistant uh, court clerk here in Brockton. And he's going to speak to you about his experience in the uh, military. Thank you. Thank you. Could I have one of your children join me up here? Is that all right? Would you mind standing stand up here with me? Help me share the stage. My sons, Mikey and James, Tatiana. Take the blue. Cut your sin away next to me. You really brought the water. Well, first of all, let me say what a great honor it is to share the stage with, uh, with so many wonderful people. Uh, first, I'd like to say uh, thank you to the mayor for all that he does. Uh, we're great supporters of the mayor. We love the mayor and the great job he's doing. Thank you. We'd also like to thank our city councilors for all of the service that they've done for us. Thank you very much. Is that right if I say something humorous before we start? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's Veterans Day, and I'm a veteran, so I should be able to say something. But uh, Mr. Farrell, who invited me uh, on Friday, he told me that uh, he's looking forward to seeing me and the scouts. He said, uh, I hope that you're coming because you're the guest speaker. I said, well, okay. <laughs> but yeah, he also told me, he gave me two rules. He said, number one, be brief. And number two, he said, don't forget to mention the other branches of the service because Marines are like that. They, they like the Catholics in heaven. They think they're the only ones there sometimes. But I want to tell you something humorous the other day. I was at the gun range with my good friend Joe Prosper, our scoutmaster from 2000. And there was an army guy, this is not a joke, this is a true story. There was an army guy at the range with us, and uh, it didn't take very long for the army guy and the marine guy to start having jokes about each other's branches. And the army guy said, do you know how you can tell if a, if a man was in the marines? He said, no, how do you know if a man was in the marines? He said, don't worry, he'll tell you. <laughs> but Veterans Day is a, great, a day of great reflection, a time to remember all of the uh, men and women who served in combat. 
But for me, it's, a, it's not just a time to remember the folks who have served in combat, but to remember all of our veterans. And anybody who knows me, although we are pro-Marine in our family, although it looks like we have a future soldier uh, next to me, uh, we're very pro-Marines. Friends of mine will tell you that everywhere I go, if I see a, a gentleman or a woman with a military cap, whatever branch uh, that they served in, I always extend my hand and I always say, thank you for your service. And I've done that my whole life. And I come from a long line of veterans. My, both, both my grandfathers were uh, in the military, they were World War II. And uh, one grandfather, uh, he served over 30 years in the Navy. My father was a Korean War veteran, he was 88 years old, still with us, thank God. I have two uncles who are Vietnam veterans. Uh, one of them was a Korean Marine, both of them Marines. My older sister was uh, also in the Army. So we have always, always loved our veterans. I was talking to my father about this, uh, this great honor to be able to speak today in the War Memorial Building and trying to come up with some ideas of what I might be able to add to the event. And he reminded me that the veterans did not always have the great love that they have today. <clears throat> he reminded me that, of course, in World War II, the entire country was behind the war effort. Everybody supported the war. Everybody supported the troops overseas. And back home in America, everybody did their part. They had rations. Where's Mr. Cataldo? Is Mr. Cataldo still here? I mean, he could tell us that, the, uh, that they rationed gasoline, they rationed sugar and, uh, and milk and, and other things. So everybody participated. And when those troops came home from World War II, they were greeted by thousands and thousands of people. They had parades all the way across the country. Thousands of people uh, welcomed these heroes home as they should have. My father told me that when he came home from, from the Korean War, and keep in mind the Korean War was about three years and 53,000 people lost their lives over there. But he told me he came home to silence. So he pointed out to me that our love for the military is gone, gone in waves. But my father reminded me that the Korean War veterans came home, there were no parades, there were no political speeches. He tells me that they came home, they put their duffel bag away, put the uniforms in the duffel bag, put on their work clothes and went to work. But he reminded me that the Vietnam veterans had it even worse. My father said, at least we came home to silence. The Vietnam veterans came home to, and we all know the story, anybody is of age knows the story of how poorly the Vietnam veterans were treated. How many Vietnam veterans are here in the hall? Raise your hand, please. Let's hear it for our Vietnam veterans. You know, I'm looking to the uh, left and I see all these uh, handsome uh, police officers dressed beautifully in the uniforms. And I know that uh, I see a couple of older faces here, and I don't mean to pick on anyone in particular, Lieutenant, but I know that there's a lot of older faces. And you folks, you, you folks remember the Vietnam veterans that you had on your job, right? But they didn't receive any parades. There were no parades for those folks. So uh, I think it's a long time coming that we recognize them. But in any event, for my own personal career, I was in during what we call the Cold War. There really wasn't much to it. I joined in 1977, and I retired in 1999. And it was the, uh, the great joy of my life. So I was in during peacetime, so I, I probably sacrificed the same as a, a lot of peacetime veterans sacrificed. I missed the, uh, the death and the burial of a couple of grandparents. But we missed a lot of things. We missed a lot of Christmases, missed a lot of Thanksgivings, missed a lot of the major holidays, but uh, that's just the way it went. But I can tell you now, you know, uh, my friends know that I always wear a Marine hat or a Marine sweater or something like that. And so very, very commonly people will come up and they'll thank me for my service. And uh, I always feel a twinge of guilt when they thank me. I mean, I always say, oh yeah, well, my pleasure, you know. But I always feel a twinge of guilt because it was really, uh, it was a lot of fun. I loved being in the, in the Marines. How many Marines do we have here today? <laughs> Happy birthday, right? Uh, it was absolutely the honor of my life to serve in the United States Marine Corps. So um, if they only knew, uh, all we need to do is uh, lift weights, shoot guns, drink beer, and, uh, and now we're retired. But I'll tell you, I want to sum it up very, very easily saying that uh, it's, it's just a great honor, and it's even a greater honor to be on the stage with my children, uh, my two boys and my daughter. I wish Mr. Cataldo was still up here, because I, uh, I, I knew, where's Mr. Cataldo? Oh, I don't see. 
Does that stick towel all the way back then? Yeah. <sighs> yep, thank you. Um, but you guys have shared the stage with a hero, a World War II hero. And when you're my age, you'll be able to tell your children and your grandchildren that on Veterans Day, your father gave a speech and we're all on the same stage as a hero. Let's hear from Mr. Catalba. So let me leave with this thought. President Reagan summed it up best. President Reagan said that some people spent their whole lives wondering if they made a difference in this world. He said veterans don't have that problem. So can I ask everybody to stand? Can everybody stand? Ask everybody to stand? And at this time, can I give you all, and please help us give all of our veterans a great round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank a veteran every day. Don't wait till veterans day. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Term of intimacy for retired first time. At this time, I would ask the BFW color guard for volley salute.
Thank you very much. Um, that concludes our ceremony for Veterans Day 2018. Special thanks to Ms. Kennedy for your angelic focus. <laughs> Thank you.